seconds. This is 45 minutes. Frank Luntz joining us. He's the uh, Republican pollster in gen generic. Do you poll for Republicans or do you poll for others? Well, my, my primary polling now is corporate based. Some of the, I think it's now two dozen Fortune 100 companies, I do these focus groups on air for Fox. And I present to both political parties, but I come from a Republican background. I worked on the contract with America for Newt Gingrich, for Rudy Giuliani. So however you want to label me, it's Christmas. <laughs> I got no complaints. So and is that the, the word doctors? Is, is that a recent uh, effort of yours? Yes, I saw my company in 2008, and still people don't realize. There's a reporter from the New York Times that called my old company trying to find me, and they actually said that I'd retired. Well, obviously I haven't. And uh, the word doctor's name is about to change. In fact, this is I'm now breaking news. As of the 1st of January, and I'm not ready to announce the new name yet, but uh, I've expanded. Uh, we are now uh, in five different states, mm -hmm. uh, localities, and it's going to have a new name as of January 1st, but I can't quite tell you what that is. Uh, but some of the polling, at least uh, you've done recently, asking folks about the, their opinions as far as where they, where you are and where we're going, so yes. to speak. One of them saying that talking about America's best days, um, and you broke it down in a party, but can you, uh, I'll give you the raw numbers. The best days, according to some that are behind us, are 44%. The best days are ahead of us, 45% registered an opinion, 10% gave no opinion, and 2% said the best days are right now. Give us the particulars and expand on that. Yeah, let's take, if you look at it over the last 50 years, this question's been asked, first started to be asked uh, in the early 1950s, and the numbers are more negative today than they have ever been. We have a more negative society. The good news on this Christmas Day is that this was a very good shopping season. The people started to break out of the shell, started to uh, put out a little bit of money, and at some point it had to happen. You couldn't have a worse season in 07, 08, 09, and then again in 010. But it's a better season based on a lower overall number. And so the American people look at what's happening today, and, and they're angry and they're frustrated. Even though it's Christmas, we're going to go to calls momentarily, and people are still going to yell and scream. And it's a real tragedy, because in the end, I don't think that there's another country we'd rather live in than this one. I don't think that there's a time that we'd rather be in than this one. With so many opportunities, you've got an iPad right there, with the iPad and the iPhone and the iPod, and when you think of technology and all the opportunities it gives us, that we are now truly a global society, that I've already received phone calls wishing me happy holidays from two people who, li who live in Europe that cost them nothing through Skype. Mm -hmm. It is amazing what we have at our fingertips, and yet, as that polling numbers show, half of Americans just think that our best days are behind us. My hope is that for 2011, that we can set aside some of this division, that we can once again treat each other with decency and civility. Disagree, mm -hmm. because we do have fundamental principle disagreements, but do so like you and I are talking right now and that we can begin to be a little bit more optimistic and appreciate the things that we have in this country. It's fair to say, though, when you have those disagreements, a lot of it's because of messages that are sent by both sides. You had part of shaping those messages, too, though. So you're a part of it, I and would one suspect. Of, and one of the things I've tried to do is I've tried to focus on the positive. I've tried to focus on not just disagreeing with something, but a better alternative. And I've always said to the people that I work for in the corporate world and the political mm -hmm. world, don't just complain. Find something better. If you disagree with the president's health care plan, you have a responsibility to offer an alternative. If you don't like this reform or you don't want them spending more money, then you have to explain why Washington is incapable of solving a problem or why it needs to be solved at the local level and at, in the private sector level. So there always has to be an alternative. And finally, you know, I do these focus groups all across the country, mm -hmm. and I'm losing control. I've been doing this now for almost 20 years. Every time I do the show on Christmas Day, I realize I get fatter. This chin gets weaker and weaker. I don't know what to do about it. <laughs> but I'll tell you, this year I lost control, and I've never lost control of my participants. And I regard them as mine. I, what do you mean by lost control? I can't stop them from yelling at each other. I can't, I can't bring the intensity of the conversation down. I did a session in Las Vegas. And they went nuts. I did a session in Southern California. I could hear behind me. One of the rules, I don't know if viewers watch this, but you never turn your back on live television, ever, no matter what's going on. But my participants were yelling so loud behind me that at one point, because I was afraid that someone was going to use a four-letter word, 
that there would be a $500,000 fine from the FCC and mm -hmm. my job would be over, that I actually turned my back and said, stop. Sorry for the people in the control room. And they still didn't stop. That's how intense it's become. So we got to chill out and listen a little bit more and yell a little bit less. Uh, but this comes at a time, if you take in public opinion, that we saw in the last couple of weeks in the Congress, efforts on both sides coming to compromises on these things. Correct. And yet the public didn't give them any credit for it. In the numbers that I saw from Gallup, I would have thought that the approval rating for Congress would have gone up. But when they made the agreement on the uh, tax cuts, and, or, or not preventing a tax increase, and on jobless benefits, and on the alternative minimum tax, you would have thought that both sides would have been happy. In reality, both sides were complaining that there was compromise with the other. Can't do it that way anymore. You just, you just can't pull this country apart. Uh, did you determine what went into saying, or what you asked folks as far as what they determined if they were the best days were behind us or ahead of us or, or no opinion? What, what kind of questions did you have to ask to, to come to those conclusions? They come to it's all a matter of perception. And I know that the fear, and actually if you can go, there's another chart below that, and I want to address that. To me, this is one of the greatest tragedies of what's happening right now. You still have 58% of Americans who consider themselves better off than their parents, and only 31% who say it's worse. But look at that pie chart on the right. 58% think that their kids are going to have it worse than them and only 27% better. We are, as a country, the most optimistic, the most hopeful, the most having the greatest faith in the future. Not anymore. This work was done for the Vernon Kreebel Foundation. It was a study of how Americans think about themselves, their responsibilities as citizens, their responsibilities as, as Americans. And the tragedy is that we are losing that fundamental faith that tomorrow will be better than today. And I'm afraid of the consequences What's of that. What's the Vernal Kreebel Foundation? Vernal Kreebel Foundation looks at immigration issues. They look at uh, uh, relationships between citizens and their country. Uh, it's, he was one of the founders of the Heritage Foundation. And this is one of the great think tank type organizations that really does focus on why we think the way that they do and they look for solutions in issues such as immigration or health care fundamental issues uh, if you want to ask mr. Lentz a question 202-737-0001 uh, for Republicans 202-737-0002 for Democrats and independents 202-628-0205 again reach us uh, a couple other ways if you wish uh, off of Twitter if you want to do so this morning cspan wj off of twitter.com is how you uh, do so and then if you want to send us email along those lines uh, questions or whatever uh, journal at cspan.org is how you do that now think of what you just did you just gave people so many different ways to contact you to interact with you I was doing the show 10 years ago none of that existed this is why we should be so optimistic that you can yell at me by email you can yell at me by Twitter you can take me on in a dozen different ways isn't that a good thing? Well, off of Twitter, John Kane asks you this. He says that you are one of the people, quote, pulling this country apart, and now you want to say stop. Uh, I have always, if you actually looked, and I'd say to you, read Words That Work, which is my first book, read What Americans Really Want Really. In all of these, I've always explored the positive approach to some of the most fundamental divisive issues, that he has to read it. You cannot just take your information from the web, and frankly, the risk of upsetting my employers. You cannot just take it from cable news. You've got to read all sorts of sources. To me, the greatest threat in American society in terms of our information is that we get our news to be affirmed rather than informed. Mm -hmm. We collect our news based on what confirms what we already believe rather than adding new information. And then it makes it so difficult because even our basic facts we don't agree on. And which is why I watch MSNBC two or three nights a week. I always read the New York Times, and I always read the Wall Street Journal, because I want to get as many different perspectives as I can. I urge that uh, gentleman to do the same. Uh, calls for you have lined up. Great. So uh, let's start with Swick, uh, Swickley, Pennsylvania, Democrats line. Tim, good morning. Go good ahead. Good morning, You're on. gentlemen. Thank good you. morning, gentlemen. I have a question for your guest. Uh, on November 17th, C-SPAN aired um, uh, Global Warming, um, hearing from the Energy and Environment Subcommittee during which uh, Dr. Richard Feely asserted uh, that uh, excess CO2 threatens to 